Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our virtual town hall, Healthy Fathers and Healthy Families. It's all about improving birth outcomes through fatherhood, community, and holistic well-being. I am your host today, Ryan the Lion. You can hang out with me weekdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. inside the Lion's Den on Magic 95.9. And today I am joined by some distinguished gentlemen to help me talk about Be More for Healthy Babies. Our guest this afternoon, first up is Dumont Millard, uh, President and CEO, Family League of Baltimore. Dumont, how you doing? Doing well, Ryan. So good to see you, my brother. You Happy too. belated Father's Day to you. Happy belated Father's Day, brother. Uh, next up, we also have Lewis Wright joining us today. Mr. Always, father, advocate, and podcaster. Hello, Lou. Also joining us today will be Rodney Burris. He's an author and fatherhood engagement activist. He's worked uh, extensively with Be More for Healthy Babies and Promise Heights. Welcome, Rodney. Good to have you, brother. Good to have you. Thank you, sir. Also joining us today, Derek Lewis, uh, fatherhood engagement specialist, uh, also working with Baltimore Healthy Start. Hey. Hello. Hey, what's up, Derek? All right. How's All it going, right. guys? Good, good, good. I love this already, Glad man. Glad to be here. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, also joining us today, uh, the very distinguished Mr. Dr. Kevin Daniels. He is the Associate Pro Professor at Morgan State University's School of Social Work and also a pastor at St. Mark's Church of Christ Incorporated. Hey, Doc, how's it going? Oh, I'm real good. Hey, family, how y'all doing? Hello, sir. Hello, please. Uh, man, this is awesome. Glad to have all you brothers here with me today. Um, now that we got the intros out of the way, we know a little bit about what uh, everybody does. I want to get to know a little bit more about you guys. I want to take a minute or so to just go around the room and have you, you know, tell me a little bit more about you and how your life experiences have impacted how you show up in your fatherhood journey. All right. So let's start with Lewis first. Lewis, can you hear me? Would that be uh, Derek Lewis? Would that be me? No, no, not Derek Lewis. I'm gonna call you okay. Derek. We all, we all on first name <laughs> basis here. All right. <laughs> uh, so if, if Lewis, can you hear me, Lou? Looks like Lou might be having um, a little bit of trouble there. So you know what? Let's go to Rodney. Rodney, um, I tell can me hear a little bit more about you. Sure. Tell me a little bit more, more about you and how your life experiences have impacted how you show up in your fatherhood journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so first of all, just doing a quick tech check. Am I coming through clearly? Cause I look frozen on my end. <laughs> we hear I'm you. Fine. Oh, okay. We hear you. Okay. Well, uh, so let me do this real quick, just in case. Let me see. Did that help? I tried to stop the cam. Well, you're good. We can hear you. So you're good. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so my wife and I have five kids, man. Uh, my twins mm. are sixteen. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Some I, I told her to do something else. Dr. Kevin, I told her she, I was like, you want to do something else besides keep having. She didn't listen. She didn't. Somebody she didn't listen to me. But uh, yeah, so we have five kids, man. Uh, our oldest kids are twins, Aaliyah and Anthony, sixteen years old. Uh, they are in two different high schools in the city uh, here in Baltimore. They are at Carver and Digital. Uh, my daughter is a culinary genius. She's been cooking Thanksgiving dinner for the whole family by herself. The bird, the dishes, the menu, the dessert. What? Since she was 10. Since she was 10. Like, this ain't even new. Wow. This, is, this is what we've been doing. So um, that's Aaliyah. Anthony is a track star and an engineer. Every VCR, Demond, every CD player I've ever had, man, has been in pieces all over the living room, man, since he was seven years old. <laughs> uh, that's my engineer. Uh, my 14 year old son, his name is Micah. Um, and Micah is a combat sports athlete, boxing, taekwondo, uh, uh, wrestling. He's been doing all of that kind of stuff. He wants all of the belts when he gets older. And my daughter Jada is 12. And then last but not least, somebody left the gate open, bro. We got a seven year old. So <laughs> services. So if, it, if anybody can connect me to some wraparound uh, supports and services, man, that for this show would be greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, man. Five, oh, man. five kiddos, bro. You got a starting five right there, man. You, do, man. you definitely do. I, I'm always running. Listen, man, true story, Ryan. True story. But my youngest boy, the, the seven year old, when uh -huh. he was a year and a half, well, when he was like three, four months, five months. I would be downstairs minding my business, helping out the other kids. 
there's already a lot of kids in the house. I'm thinking as everybody, I, I would hear this random baby crying. I'm like, what's what? Oh, for like four or five months, bro. For four or five months, it didn't. I like, I'm like, one, two, what? Who, baby? Oh, she had a nut, right? She she had another one. You, <laughs> you work with me, man. I'm, I'm just work with me, man. <laughs> oh, brother. I feel you, man. I feel you. I feel you. Oh, man. Well, congrats on that, man. And uh, looked like you had a full Father's Day, it sounds like, as well. <laughs> I did. I did. I got back from Charlotte last night. I was working in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I got back about 10 o'clock. Uh, my daughter was like, Daddy, stop and pick up some chicken on your way home. I grabbed some chicken, uh, KFC, and they had balloons, bro. And, uh, cheesecake and a whole bunch of stuff, macaroni and cheese. And we just kind of enjoyed, took some pictures, and uh, awesome, felt real awesome. good to be back home, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, let's move on to uh, Dr. Kev, Mr. Mister Daniels. Yeah, you're calling me Kevin. You? Call me Kevin. I am, um, um, yeah, my, um, um, I'm, I'm all the way from Baltimore City. I grew up in Murphy Homes, Sandtown. Um, and of course, um, because of, of family and friends selling snowballs, uh, frozen cups, I was able to go to Morgan State University. <laughs> That's right. how we used to do it back in the day, Operation Champ. Um, right. We used to sell uh, frozen cups with the clean block campaigns. And they fixed it so that I was able to go to Morgan and to become a social worker and follow in the steps of some of the great goon squad members um, here um, in Baltimore City. And that's how I show up. I'm a social worker. I've been teaching social work and getting young people out on the uh, micro, mezzo, um, and the macro level for community, clinical, all of those things. Um, I've been getting them out for 18 years at Morgan State University. Um, and also working with our alumni as social workers. And it just shows up in my, my experiences, all of my hard experiences, all of the challenges that I've gone through in the streets of Baltimore. I'm back in the streets of Baltimore working with the We Our Us men's movement. Um, but all of those experiences shaped my fatherhood. I was with my daughters on yesterday um, and it shaped my experiences, has shaped um, my ability to challenge their excellence. Um, mm. Because I know that their excellence um, is there. Um, Greek word calls it yaktia, their mm. ability to surpass um, the point of their origin. So mm. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about my girls and my sons. Um, and I'm excited about even the fictive kinship that I have with those young men um, that are in the street as well. Um, I become their papa. And I'm excited to be here. Thing. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, Mr. Derek. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, Mr. Derek, how about you? Um, can you guys hear me? Because the picture keeps going in and out in the sound as well. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Loud and clear. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, um, thank you and happy Father's Day to everyone. Um, you to start, I am a God-fearing man, and uh, my life experience had had its shares of ups and downs, mainly downs with uh, constant uncertainties, although life for me was uh, tough, the experience of not having a father to guide my past has helped me to prepare ready to show up as a better father for my own, okay? Uh, and I have two daughters, uh, 142 and another 129. So I've been around for a minute and you don't get to grow up and grow old in Baltimore yeah. being stupid. <laughs> my man had his facts right there <laughs> thank you so much Derek um, and uh, Damon how about you brother yes sir so uh, again good afternoon so good to be with you uh, great brothers and such an esteemed and established panel uh, so I am a son of uh, Northwest Baltimore uh, they call the area now Garwin Oaks uh, but you probably know a little bit more about Walbrook Junction and heard of it a little right. bit more uh, can relate to it I'm the youngest of uh, four children. I'm the son of uh, Harry Alexander uh, Millard. My father and mother were both uh, products of the Jim Crow South and came to Baltimore in the 50s uh, for a greater opportunity for life. So almost like what Rodney said, I'm the change of life baby uh, who, who, who came on the, on the tail end of it. Uh, right. But now I'm able to share that love and joy before hashtags became uh, popular, hashtag uh, girl dad. That's what my right. father was. And I was able to have a very special seat uh, to see that in a way that 
uh, they were able to raise my, my three older sisters, and more importantly, see how that uh, relationship materialized uh, as they reached adulthood. And so uh, Asa Alexandra Millard is the eye of my, my life. Uh, she is the princess, and I'm a, a, a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. But when it comes time to talk about unicorns and rainbows, I will do it for my princess. <laughs> and I dare for you to say anything about it. Uh, but, but, but that is the love. And, and how do we show up? Uh, the experience is being a, a protector, a provider, uh, but more importantly, uh, a, a nurturer in utilizing life experiences, really just to make sure uh, that our rare and precious gems that we have right now uh, really have the opportunity to thrive. Uh, it, just like Dr. Daniel said, and, and I really see that in terms of uh, going, going to a, a point of scriptural context, you know, mothers, they birth, they bring our children into the world, but I do see that fathers pray, play a role uh, just as the molders of the clay, a shape and mold in terms of the personalities that we see uh, hopefully for the future. And as uh, former Congressman Elijah Cummings said, our children are the living messages to a future that we'll never see. And so that is my lived experience. And that's how I model myself as a part of this fatherhood fatherhood journey. Yeah, that is absolutely awesome. And, you know, we talk about Father's Day and um, uh, we had a conversation uh, recently, the difference between fathers and dads. And um, you guys are really showing what dads are really about, you know? And uh, so thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, now, Dumas, since we have you, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Be More for Healthy Babies? Sure. What's, so, yeah, what's all that about? No, so Be More for Healthy Babies have been around since 2009 when it was first founded. Uh, it's led by the Baltimore City Health Department. Uh, my organization, uh, Family League of Baltimore, as well as Healthcare Access Maryland, are key partners as a part of it. It's basically a citywide initiative that's really focused in terms of addressing the issues as it relates to infant mortality within the city of Baltimore. And if I wanna just kind of like give a, a, a personal kind of first introduction to this conversation, I used to work in Washington DC uh, in the early 2000s. And I remember seeing an article in the Washington Post that basically was talking about the infant mortality rate specifically in Baltimore and how uh, the uh, basically the, the, the poor birth outcomes specifically for black infants almost rivaled that of some developing countries. Mm. And I couldn't believe it. And I said, well, wait a minute. I mean, you're talking about my city with this, you know, right, the home of Johns Hopkins and all right. of the prominent right. medical institutions. Right. How does that, how is that even possible? Right, right. And so what you have is basically a number of challenges, obviously social, economic, racial in nature, in terms of institutional uh, barriers that exist that also show up and it's reflected in terms of infant mortality. And so when you're looking at it in terms of 2009, uh, basically, the, uh, uh, basically the birth uh, to uh, death ratio was 13.5 uh, 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 deaths for every 1,000 births. So really in terms of 19, the early 1900s, uh, the federal government basically were using infant, infant mortality rates as really as a rate, not only just to give you a snapshot in terms of the birth of babies and infants, but more importantly, to give you a full greater picture in terms of community health, access to quality health care. So again, if you don't prioritize in terms of one, your most precious assets being our children, then what does that say about the larger community? And I think a lot of the systemic challenges that we see that face, uh, you know, quite frankly, that covers the news in the newspaper, you know, again, goes back to, in terms of the priorities and the investments not being made on the front end. So be more for healthy babies, work with community partners, academics, nonprofit organizations, bringing everyone together through a collective impact strategy with one objective. And that is to basically drive down that infant mortality rate. So therefore there is a level playing field when we're talking about regardless of zip code, regardless of neighborhoods, basically every child is able to be born at a healthy birth weight and obviously be in the best position to, to thrive within their families and have a great start. That is unbelievable to know that stat. That, that is remarkable. I had no idea, I had no idea. So definitely thank you very much. Uh, sure. Be more healthy baby, man. Uh, something that's definitely a necessity in our community. Uh, who knew that those stats were, were, were that uh, alarming? That's, that's really crazy. And, and, and unfortunately it doesn't get a lot, of, it doesn't get, I should say, it doesn't get enough attention. Right, and, right, and, right, and and that's why I think forums like this, seeing positive men of strong men of color, 
uh, who are fathers as well and leaders right. within the respective community to help elevate and lift the awareness around these issues and challenges. Because again, there are those who want fathers to be excluded out of the, the dialogue when it so comes true. to families. I mean, so I'm true. saying, you know, going, you want to speak truth to power. And right. so again, if we're removed from that, then how are our communities are supposed to fare? That's right. It won't work. That's what that's part of the plan, they say. All right. Well, uh, is Lewis back with us? Did we get Lewis back yet? Well, Mr. Always. Can you hear me, Lewis? Look like he's still having a little bit of trouble there. Lou? Yep, still having some trouble. Um, let me ask uh, Rodney a quick question. Uh, hey, Rodney. Uh, now, Mayor yeah. Scott recently joined Be More for Healthy Babies in celebrating uh, a 75% drop in the infant mortality rate in the Upton and Druid Heights neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk about the role of fathers and the decline and why emphasizing holistic health among men is important for continued progress? Yeah, man. So a large part of the infant mortality has to do with awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just, and, or the lack thereof. And so simple things that I know or that I don't know. And so organizations like Be More for Healthy Babies, I've worked with them for a while, uh, kind of as a, as a third party partner, doing work, uh, doing workshops. Uh, me and some of the staff actually walked around to barbershops and had conversations with dads years ago. And so initiatives that basically equip people with the knowledge. Some stuff is like common sense. Some stuff is second nature. Some stuff isn't right some stuff just isn't and so it's absolutely vital that we as dads kind of link up listen but see the here's the deal in all human services work in right. church work in nonprofit work in the education field all of those type of industries that do the same type of building the person building the mind build, taking care of the heart it's important to package the information in a way that dudes can get it Right. A lot of these organizations are bolstered by the presence of of our sisters, our women, which is vital. We need them. Absolutely. But a manhood fatherhood approach isn't taking what the what works for women and slapping man or dad or fatherhood on it and then inviting them to a meeting. We don't rock like that. Right. And so initiatives fall short. Right. The mind will rock like that. And so initiatives fall short because it's like, well, brothers, we hit a. You know, and it's like dudes don't talk like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important to have men at the table thinking like, man, I have done this work in schools around the city. I've actually done this work around the country. It's important to take the information. And then once we get it, folks like us and others that are partnering with us, put it in the hands of dudes to process it, flavor it, season it, so that the rest of the body can take it in. Does that make sense? That's Absolutely. vitally important so that the message go down, goes down. Absolutely. I think that's a, a, a great point. You got to know who your audience is and you got to know Absolutely. how to deliver that message to the audience. Uh, very, very good point. Um, now, Dr. Daniels, uh, Kev, <laughs> um, you wear several hats in the community. You do a lot and you work uh, to support and engage men. Uh, you, can you talk a bit about the role of the faith community as well as your support of community organizations to make sure these improved outcomes can, can continue? Yeah, I, I think I said it earlier. Um, you heard me give my, my spiel on um, the fact that I, I come from a history of faith-based leaders, not only right. the Boom Squad, but you're, you're talking about uh, in Baltimore City, Harvey Johnson. Uh, you're talking about um, great people that started the Niagara Movement all the mm -hmm. way up to the NAACP and beyond. Um, you to, most of them were people of faith. Um, and also they were people of faith and people of community. And I mimic uh, my previous generations, even in my own work. So I can't go beyond and launch and catapult into other kinds of spheres um, unless um, I pay them homage and deference and even deeper respect. So what I'm doing even now, social work was just um, endemic to, to what I needed to do and who I was because that's what I saw displayed, people taking care of their families. Um, churches um, hosting communities at their sites. And we mimicked that and developed uh, for the, um, the chair of the Minister's Conference, um, CDC. Um, and one of the things we service 14 hubs throughout Baltimore City. Um, but what was more critical um, is the fact that 
um, we asked the community doing the research we were doing with the um, consent decree as a part of the as a part of the consent decree community engagement. We asked the people um, what it is, what is it that you need, what it is that you want, um, and they said four things in that needs assessment. They talked about public safety, public health, um, but then they talked about education, but also workforce and uh, economic development. And in that process, we built out from there. Um, and we joined in with the We Our Us movement, a group of faith pastors, um, the Nation of Islam, but then um, the Kioba brothers, which Rodney knows, the Kioba brothers, um, 30 black men that are in our communities, um, moving real estate um, together. We own a company together. Um, and beyond that, working with these black men in community, going into the hardest hit communities, giving people and our young boys an opportunity um, to keep growing and to move forward. And what we've learned, the lesson that we've learned being in the community is the fact that what these young men want, what these families want is the presence of black men. The very power of the presence of black men is more potent than some of the words we use out of our mouths. Um, ultimately because we're there, um, we're in those communities. And of course, change, cultural change, it takes um, incremental steps. So we've been incrementally moving things on and it's not necessarily instant, it is right. incremental. And we've been doing that. We've been a part of those lives. Our churches have served as hubs into those communities. We don't do what we wanna do. We do what the community asks us to do um, throughout our process. Um, and that's what makes us successful. And I say, we need coalitions to do this work. There, there's some talented people in Baltimore. I've seen them, I've heard them as a part of the trauma task force as well. I know they're out there, but connecting and being a coalition is something that needs to continue to be strengthened in Baltimore City. I'm on the Black Arts um, um, Group. I'm with um, Druid Heights um, CDC on the board. I, you listen. Um, somebody said, how in the world you keep doing all of this? It's who I am. It was yeah. built into me um, and it is passed on as a legacy to my children. So I'm excited to be here and excited to talk to these strong black brothers that are on this line. Absolutely. A be beautiful thing, man. And um, I, one thing I love that you said um, was where you got it from, where you got work ethic that, you know, that that drive to, to be in the community and help. And that's something that we have got to get to the next generation. And um, I agree. Coalitions, we got to work together. Brothers, we need to get, get come together more and uh, more stuff like this, more awareness, more information. And um, again, man, unity is more powerful than we can even imagine. So, yes, Dr. Kev, you are absolutely correct. Man, we definitely need more coaches. Shout out to Morgan State University. The Bears. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Derek, are you there? Let me ask you something, man. Let me get some info about this uh, Baltimore Healthy Start. Derek, can we get him up on the screen? Is he there? Hey, Derek. Um, I want to ask you, uh, how does Baltimore Healthy Start make sure that fathers have what they need to show up as their best selves or have support through challenging times. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, okay, now this is getting ready to go out again. It's going out like every two minutes and coming back in. Okay, well, while so, we have you, uh, yeah, while we have you, cause we can hear you fine right now. So can you tell okay, me a little bit about- um, yeah, can you tell me a little bit about Baltimore Healthy Start and how you know they make sure fathers have what they need to show up as their best selves and have support through some challenging times? Nope, gone. Oh, we lost Kev again. But maybe, Dumas, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. So uh, happy to fill in. So Healthy Start is a part of a network of uh, different uh, service providers uh, that provide intense home visiting services. And so not only uh, Healthy Start, but also Drew Mandaman, uh Family Services, uh, The Family Tree uh, also is an organization in which they do is they go into uh, the, the census tracts in the neighborhoods with the toughest, quite frankly, challenges where they're feeling that families are overburdened with the stressors of life. And we know how deep that runs in the city of Baltimore when we're talking about concentrated poverty, issues of public safety, 
And so really making sure that they're make, having that connection to services. And so what does that service look like? It's not one size fits all for all families. Uh, so obviously you might have a situation in terms of issues of trauma that uh, was inherently uh, a part of uh, the, uh, the, the, the family structure or issues as it relates to uh, substance uh, abuse and need to you know, connect to respective resources. These programs make that connection and make those referrals and also provide case management support. So Family League works a lot uh, 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 on, on a day-to-day -day basis with these programs, making sure that one, uh, that they have uh, all of the, the funding uh, resources that's needed from federal, state, and local government. Uh, but more importantly, that we're also in a position to collect that data so we're able to be strategic with that outreach. But quite frankly, the work that Derek does and all the programs uh, and, and providers that I mentioned earlier, they do it day in, day out. It's not easy work. It's not pretty work, but they are the heroes when we're talking about the reductions when we're seeing uh, most recently as a part of this Be More For Healthy Babies overall initiative uh, in terms of infant mortality. Because again, there's an invested level of trust with people that you know, people that look like you, uh, that speaks your language like Rodney was breaking down earlier, you know, being able to be the translator. Uh, because again, when we're in the space, and uh, and I know Dr. Daniels could talk to that. I mean, I'm not, no, he's not going to claim himself to be an academic completely, but those scholars they speak in these very voluminous terms, and they use these, you know, uh, 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 various phrases that, quite frankly, the brother out here on you know Madison uh, and Whitelock. Right. This is going to understand what you're talking about. Right, right. And so you need these programs in order to meet community where they are and being able to put them in the best position possible for success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I also want to ask you guys now, uh, you guys are in the community. You've been working on a lot of these issues. Um, this past year and a half has been really um, challenging. So how have you guys been able to kind of maneuver and navigate to, and still be able to do what you need to do um, to get information out. Has it? You know, how, how difficult has that been for you guys? Yeah, man, Rod, go ahead. yeah, man. Uh, a global pandemic is a real thing, right? Real everybody, thing. everybody learning on their feet. Everybody right. kind of scrambling. Um, one of the things that I have found that we're trying to redo, like reapply now that things are opening back up. So kind of moving out of the world of just living through the lens and then living through Zoom. If we need to go back to that, we're going to have to do it. But as we begin to have more of a hybrid new normal of whatever that looks like, there are certain things that guys are naturally drawn to be a part of, right? And so when I was doing work with schools and principals around increasing fatherhood, when I was working with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Maryland years ago to increase their male mentorship and other such initiatives, here's some things that work, right? I'm going to just rattle off a couple of couple of ones. This is going to sound so simple. And then we might laugh, but you're going to be able to connect immediately. Chicken wings. Have some wings, not crackers and cheese and tomatoes, hard broccoli. Put some wings out, right? That's the first thing. The second thing, have events that they want to come to. Your school, your church, your community center got a gym. Open it up. Let them come play ball while they're there. Hey guys, we about to start the second half of it. We just real quick while we got everybody's attention, run the information, pass the sign out sheet, get the numbers, then go back to doing whatever. You got to get, you got to shift the mindset. One of the schools, we made national headlines for this through a, a magazine called PTO Today, school right here in Baltimore. We did a fishing derby. They had like 200 people out there, aunts and cousins and I mean, all kind of people came out. We was out in somewhere, Middle River, somewhere, uh, and just had a Saturday where we out there for three, four, five hours eating and fishing. You had it was a cookout. It was a cookout. Have a day where we paint some of the school, like just different things where you already got them, and then walk them through and let them see the right, the sixth, second grade homework on the wall. But if you do that first. They're not going to come to the PTA. Like, like, we got other stuff to do. It's not wrong. It's different. And if we can embrace that difference and kind of approach it through that lens and not retrofit the mom's approach, I already said that point, we'll find ourselves probably making more strides attracting them where they already are. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that COVID, COVID did do 
Um, it was a powerful display of already underlying conditions um, and issues that we needed to go back to the core. It's really indigenous that we needed to go back and do some work. What we noticed with the, even during COVID, working with the men um, in uh, Gilmore, working with the men in McCullough Homes, um, working with the men in Poe Homes, what we noticed was that, um, and we ended up getting well over 800 young men um, mm -hmm. jobs. Um, we um, got young men back into rehab. Um, and we also passed them on to Kioba. They worked with us to build houses um, 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 in community, work with those same communities. Um, again, presence means everything. Um, and I say it all the time, but we've been able to do that. We've been able to harness um, that genius that's laid down on the inside of them. Amos Wilson talked about it. We've been able to tap that genius um, and begin to pull it out. Of course, there's relapse. Um, but what we notice is we also work with the um, the um, um, in trauma task force and the healing city. Um, what we did was we started during the COVID, we started what we call healing us together. Um, it is a model, men's model as well. And we're working with men through trauma, through the issues of safety, issues of psychological safety, emotional safety. And when I say fantastic, because you got to do two things, you got to do the internal work and the external work as well, because sometimes our men are not always ready for some of the external work. And we need to be able to do simultaneously both work. And what we once those men gave themselves to that five session group. Um, group work, we did virtual um, and we did several groups. What we learned was that at the soul um, and the core of who black men are, um, it is uh, providers and protectors. Um, it is men that want to be productive. We learned that through that process. We, get, we cried together, all of that. We literally have to put the uh, mic down and cry because several mm -hmm. of us had gone through some devastating um, events. And it's not until you tap the core soul, uh, the soul of black folk, um, that you realize that we still have a line, a genius, a sleeping genius down mm -hmm. on the inside. And I'm excited to be a part of that struggle. I really am. Um, and it's where I get, um, it's really where my job comes from. Mm. Mm, that's oh, beautiful. Bro. That's beautiful. And you know, that struggle, um, like they said, you know, you're pushing that weight. That's the only way you're going to get stronger. Right. So with that struggle, we're definitely going to come out on the other end, uh, definitely stronger and better because of gentlemen like you doing the work that you're doing. So commendable job, fellas. Thank you so much. Um, Dave Edgerson has a question. He says, could we have a list of upcoming events for fathers? Uh, do we have any um, events happening soon? Man, you look at the We Our Us um, Facebook page. We got a lot of stuff for y'all. Um, <laughs> okay. Again, we, we, we're meeting tonight after I get off this line. Um, we're meeting in the um, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue corridor. So if you want to hang out with some black men, um, you want to see us go out and touch the lives of families, um, come on out and join us. Um, and we have a whole list of, of activities um, that we do together. Um, we both, we do all kinds of things together, but most importantly, uh, we love on each other a whole lot. Just to hear black men say, I love you, black man. Um, is a very powerful thing, um, to bring people, um, to bring people to that point. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be a black man. Watch this demand. I'm also excited to be a five beta Sigma man. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Pan hell is all good. It's all in the family. It's all love. Yeah, it's all love. It's all love. <laughs> that's, listen, that's what they start saying, Kev. Like, no, nah, we all agree. We are. Yeah. They yeah. start singing the same song, don't they? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this brotherhood of community is a beautiful thing. Uh, Demond, can you tell us a little more uh, where people can get in some information on Be More for Healthy Babies? Sure. So a great uh, resource is obviously the website, healthybabiesbaltimore.com. Uh, as soon as you visit the, the, the website, you'll be able to really tap into all the partners that we were talking about with the various services. Uh, also, Healthcare Access Maryland. If you don't have any, uh, really, quite frankly, uh, in, in terms of some challenges with Wi-Fi technology, you can call 410-649-0500. That's 410-649-0500. Zero five hundred, and basically any expected family, uh, whether it's the, the the mother, father, 
partner. You can call and get connected to resources. Even if you don't have insurance, you can get connected in order to be uh, obviously insured. And that's one of the things, you know, obviously key that we're talking about overall health, well-being. And so obviously being insured is uh, really making sure that we have that access to quality care. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I think we're going to wrap things up in a little bit here. Uh, we have one more question from Yolanda Jenkins. Uh, she says, uh, this has been informative and insightful. Thank you all for sharing your experiences and expertise. Well, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, Yolanda. Um, you guys have any last words before we get out of here really quick? Rodney? Think, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah, Kevin. I think we, we cannot underestimate uh, mental health uh, for black men. Right. Um, being able to tap being able to tap into that is a very powerful thing and being able to watch men navigate that um, process. So resources for black men to navigate some of the underlying cri um, trauma criteria areas, whether it's from one time experience or reoccurring experiences as a licensed social worker, it becomes critical. And for us to be able to tap that together um, and be able to walk a black man through um, into perpetuity um, is literally one of the most phenomenal things you ever want to see is to watch a man, the, um, the Bible said, come to himself yeah. and go back and realize um, that he is, um, that he comes from good stock and good er um, good, um, good um, heritage. And we are truly um, the sons and daughters of Mother Africa. Uh, absolutely. Facts on that one. Go ahead, Rodney. Yeah. So first of all, every time I smile, y'all give me fake gold tea. Let me see. That, that's, <laughs> none of that's real. None of that's real. Just I just I want the record, Ryan. I want the record to show. You don't have gold teeth. Okay, that, okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is this, right? Um, I'm willing to work with any of our groups if you're listening about these initiatives because some of this stuff is so simple and we already have access to it. It's just connecting. Last tip, right. for example, for those that are comfortable, you have to be mindful of social guidelines, whatever, for your organization, right? But as much as comfortable, if you got a screen, throw it up. If the guys are going to watch the game, pick a game. Football, basketball, playoff, March Madness, right? If Whatever sporting event, Floyd Mayweather got some, whatever it is, right? Throw the screen up. Say that we got wings or something similar. What, they're going to watch it somewhere. If they can bring their sons or their kids or daddy, daughter, or whatever, bring them out, let them do that, and then once you got them, Wait to halftime commercial, right? Don't, don't get up during the middle of it. And then engage. And then you got them. And once they connect with the building and in the place in that way, they have their own connection. Some of this is very, very simple. I would love to explore more so we can change our thinking around it, right? You need to do thank, it. You for, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think it's we got to change our thinking. That's the perspective is definitely what we need to fix. Go ahead, Demond. Last no, word. I, no, just to close out, I said if I had a plate, I would pass it around for Dr. Daniels, and when he uh, just uh, <laughs> closed us out on on that on that spiritual right, lesson. Right. Also, Rodney with the uh, chicken wings. Most of my transformative moments in my life have been done over chicken wings. <laughs> so, how do we build community, brother? Let's connect. Let's right. innovate and strategize. But but more importantly, I mean, I know jokes aside, but we've been able to really focus on business. It's really about how do we change the narrative as a as it relates to black men. Absolutely. And so when we're doing that and being able to unpack all those issues and all those challenges, quite yeah. frankly, we can accomplish anything. Yeah. And it's been done throughout history. And I look forward and I'm committed to working with all of you brothers. It's Absolutely. easy to reach me reach out, touch base, and we'll definitely make it happen. And I look forward to more events and more forums like this in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so this much. A beautiful thing. Thank you, beautiful thing. I want to thank all of you guys for joining me today. Kevin, Rodney, Duman. I want to also thank uh, Derek and Lou. Uh, fortunately, they had some uh, technical difficulties, uh, but you can see that brothers are out in the community in different avenues, different fields, different industries, and they're all working for the betterment of Baltimore, the betterment of our community, the betterment for black men. And it is a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to hear. So thank you fellas for joining me today. And uh, we need more of this. And I'm sure with the way this energy was today, 
I am definitely sure we will have more of it. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And we all see you very soon. Big shout to Be More Healthy Babies, Family League of Baltimore, Magic 95.9. Gentlemen, you guys are awesome. Have a great day. And thank you once again. God bless. Absolutely. Peace, Kings. Peace, peace.